Hey guys, welcome to yet another session by Scalo. And in this particular session, we're going to look into the traveling salesman problem with a code implementation. So before we move on with this particular session, please make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our upcoming videos and also leave a like if you enjoy our content. If you have any queries, leave a comment down below and we would be addressing them all. First, let's understand what exactly we'll be covering in this particular session and then move on with the session. First of all, we'll be looking into the problem statement which we are going to solve for the traveling salesman problem. Then we'll be looking into a simple approach on how exactly we can tackle that problem and solve it. Then we'll be looking into two different implementations. We'll be using C and we'll be using Python implementation in order to solve that, right? So we'll be using these two. And also we'll try if we could solve it using dynamic programming. And also we'll be looking into how exactly to solve it using greedy approach. So all of these things will be covered in this particular session. I hope it's clear. Now let's begin with the session. So guys, before we start with solutions and looking into the code implementations, let's first understand what is the traveling salesman problem and look into the problem statement and understand how traveling salesman problem works and look into some examples. So first of all, what exactly is it? So given a set of cities and distance between each pair of cities as an adj uh, adjacency matrix, right? So if it's an adjacency uh, matrix and they are providing you the distance between each of those cities in that particular format the problem is to find the shortest possible route that visits every city exactly once and returns to the starting point for example <clears throat> zero would be the starting point right in this case uh, let's let's take this input so zero would be the starting point one second city two third city three uh third uh, sorry uh fourth city but right now there are four cities but uh, but the traveling salesman starts from the uh <clears throat> sorry zeroth city the first city but he has to visit all of these places once and return back to the starting point so how exactly should he do that which path should he take should he take zero should he go from zero to one to three to two to zero would that be feasible or should he go to zero to one to two to three to zero so it's going to be very very simple the first thing you'll have to do you'll have to look into the short shortest paths covering all the nodes so between all of these individuals right for example so first 0 to 2 and 0 to 20 which is the shortest path 10 is the shortest so the salesman should first go to 2 because that's the shortest path and then from 2 which is the shortest path 17 or 15 so 15 is the shortest path so he has to go to 1 that is the first city so that would be 15 so he'll go to 1 then from 1 which is the shortest path it's not directly to the first city because he has to at the end he has to reach the starting point so he has to go to the third city which is 11 and then he can go back to the initial city so would this be the shortest path i think yes because if he goes from 0 to 3 which would be 12 then from 0 so the only way this could be done in reverse is he could go from 0 to three, third city then go back to 1 city, 2 city and three, uh, 0 city because that would be the same output as this. But he can't do anything else like he can't go from 0 to 1 uh, because it's 20 and that would increase the path size. He can't go from 0 to 3 and then go to 2 because it's 17 but this is 11 which is much more shorter than this path right so he can't do these things or he can't go to 2 and then go to 17 uh, because 15 is shorter than 17 okay so this is basically the traveling salesman problem so from the starting point you should go to all the cities and come back to the starting point within the shortest uh, basically the shortest sum right shortest path of covering all the nodes so this is basically the tra traveling salesman problem and this is one of the examples now let's look at the second example question and then let us basically look into an approach how exactly we can solve it in code right so first of all the input is basically a c uh, sorry a b c d e so these are the five different states uh, or five different cities or whatever you can consider it so a would be the starting point in this case or e in this case they have given e as a starting point so consider city one as a starting and ending point since the route is cyclic so the thing is the route is cyclic so it doesn't matter if he starts from a or d or b or c okay so we can consider any point as starting point that's the first thing but in this case they have clearly mentioned zero would be the starting point or uh, yeah uh, now we will generate all possible permutations of cities which are n minus one factorial right this is the second thing you'll have to do third thing find the cost of each permutation and keep track of the minimum cost permutation that is 
you will have to generate possible permutations of each cities every single city right and then keep that and then the cost of each permutation and keep track of the minimum cost because only if you find the minimum cost at the start then we can basically go through the entire city cycle without having to manually count it okay so now return the permutation with the minimum cost so according to the sorry according to the minimum weight hamiltonian cycle so the city which uh, cities and the path which you, the salesman should take is e to a to c to b to d and back to e so because e to a would be 8 and a to c would be 10 then 3 then 7 then 4 and that would be the short, shortest path in this and to solve this particular thing instead of manually counting it we can use the simple approach because it doesn't matter this would be the only input right there could be other inputs so for example it could be the same cycle but the values could change so if the values change again you'll have to count them again but using this particular approach you will be able to solve for any problem which you come across so now looking at the simple approach now let's look at the code which we can use to solve this okay so please cut from when i said the code we you uh, we're going to use to solve this so now i'll just open the code and then you can start again yeah you can start the uh, you can cut it over here so now guys python implementation so in this case we are going to look into a simple approach right so first of all uh, they are importing uh, a package uh, from system max size and they are uh, importing one more thing permutations in order to run permutations right because python already has uh, the library for it you can just call it in order to figure out the permutations so now there is a, a main uh, sorry this is the function this is the main function okay so what exactly the main function does so they are providing the graph over here so this values uh, they are providing over here and s is equal to zero so print traveling salesman graph comma s so this is what they are trying to do but this is a different input which they are providing over here they are trying to figure out the smallest uh, shortest path okay so now def so this is for this one you can consider or this you can actually change the values according to the values you like okay so now looking at the vertex uh, so how how does this work let me just explain to you how does these values work so let's say this is city a city b city c and city z uh, city uh, d so city a so from a to a the path uh, the size would be zero then from a to b the path is 10 a to c it's 15 a to d it's 20 so like that this would be a again but this would be b so this is how the graph is formed over here and then so according to the number of cities you can change the values over here again so now uh, here the function is traveling salesman problem graph comma s so the s value is taken from here the graph is given from the main function into this particular function because they, we are trying to print it and we are trying to print it this function will be called and when this function is called first of all they are using a variable called vertex and uh, so for i range of v okay so they are just calling a variable over here if i is not equal to s right s is zero if i is not equal to zero then vertex dot append i so in that case you will have to append the value so if s is zero then it wouldn't append if s is 10 or 15 then the value will be appended right so now once this keeps on going because until the value of v is uh, taken out uh, it will still be going the value is four because there are four values okay so four times the for loop will run and then it will basically append all those values into vertex and then once it's appended it will break out of the loop and come to the main function so minimum path is equal to max size so next underscore so basically max size in the sense the lo uh, longest path so next underscore permutation is equal to permutations of vertex so first they are doing the permutation of the first vertex okay and then uh, they are using a for loop in order to calculate that as well so for i in next permutation so again there would be four values in this case the current path weight would be zero k is equal to s so again k is equal to s they are taking this value uh, for j in i current path weight uh, is equal to graph k j plus one so that's exactly what this means okay now k is equal to j uh, so now so this is the uh, path so it will basically interchange 
right the current path weight and then current pa underscore path weight is plus equal to graph ks and min path equal to minimum of min path and current uh, path weight so this is the minimum path this is uh, basically what will be returned and that will be taken in order to print it out okay um okay so over here uh, return min path right so this basically will go on for four different times for all of the values from the graph because the values from the graph is taken and then the shortest path will be found out so now let's run this code in a python compiler and see how exactly it works okay so now i already have opened a python compiler i'm just copy pasting this particular code and i'm running this now you can see the shortest path is 80 so uh, you can say 20 35 uh, and 25 yeah so they are basically considering that the shortest path um, 35 plus 30 plus 25 that would be 80 okay let's change one value here let's see So whatever graph we provide, I think the current path will be taken as that because these don't change the uh, values. We'll try to change drastically. Yeah, 49. See, you can basically change the values in the graph and figure out the shortest path using this particular piece of code so this is the simple approach there are other approaches so again there is a c plus plus code as well which does the exact same thing i've just given it here so that you guys if you're more into c plus plus you can use this but again uh, you don't have to actually uh, look at the uh, uh video and type this code you just can go to the description box below where we have linked a blog which is the interview bit blog which has all the code in it you can just go ahead over there and you can just copy the code and paste it and it will run for you okay so that's what i was talking about in the intro i was about to solve it using multiple languages but the thing is you don't have to solve it using multiple languages the only thing you will have to do is uh yeah, you'll have to solve it in a language but if you want to work in another language we have provided other implementations in the blog which you can go and check out so now there is the next one which is using dynamic programming so in this algorithm we have uh, we take a subset n of the required cities that need to be visited the distance among the cities distance and starting uh, city s as inputs so each city is identified by a unique city id which we say like one two three four five till n so how many other cities are there so here we are using a dynamic approach to calculate the cost function which is the total cost so using recursive calls we are using a recursive call in order to calculate it so to calculate cost by using dynamic programming we need to have some recursive relation in term of sub problems because we are going to call it again and again right so we start with all the subsets of size 2 and calculate c s comma i for all of them for all the subsets where the s is a subset then we calculate c s comma i for all subsets where size is greater than 3 okay so this is what we are going to do size is less than 2 size is greater than 3 and we are going to do that so there are at most uh, 0 n to power n sub problems and each one takes linear time to solve the total running time therefore would be 0 n power 22 uh, per n so the time con complexity is much less than uh, o n factorial but still exponential space required is also exponential okay so this is exactly what we're going to solve right now next we'll look into dynamic approach so um if you want to know more about dynamic programming guys we already have tutorials in our youtube channel you can go check it out you can understand all about dynamic programming and then come over here and see what exactly is the difference okay let me open this so i'm just copying the dynamic programming code going over here so you can download just one second guys let it be okay i'm pasting uh no let this be over here let me paste come on
yeah so i'm pasting it here right uh and let's run this it's 65 uh it's the same method over here right you can see this it's the same method but it could find the even more shortest path using the dynamic programming method so now there's one more method we have to look into which is a greedy approach so first of all we have to create two primary data holders and the first one would be a list that can hold the indices of the cities in terms of input matrix of distances between cities the second one is the array which is our result okay so now we have to perform a traversal on the given adjacency matrix tsp uh, for all the cities and if the cost of any city is reaching uh, from the current city is less than the current cost then update the cost basically you will calculate one uh, path then that path will be there then you create uh, you basically do the calculations for another path and compare these two paths and if the path is lesser than the previous path calculated then that will be up updated as the cost if it doesn't change the cost will remain the same so this is how the minimum path is generated in the greedy approach so now I also have the greedy approaches code over here. Uh, I'm just going to copy this once again, but the greedy approach is quite a bigger code than the simple approach. You can see because we are replacing the cost. Okay, just once again. yep so now this is this is dp and this is 3d so i'm i pasted the code and i'm just going to run it I think there is an issue here. Uh, please cut this part. Uh, please cut the part when I started from TSP using greedy approach. I'll start again. So now let's look into the third one which is TSP using greedy approach. First of all we have to create two primary holders and in the first one we hold the indices of the city of the input matrix of the distance between those cities. Second one is the result of the array. Basically what we'll be doing is we'll have an adjacency matrix right which will have the cost of the travel. So first there would be a cost okay and then there would be another uh, uh, metrics where we'll be calculating and updating the newest cost so now once the newest cost is up to, uh, updated both the costs are compared if the new cost is lesser than the old cost then it will get updated if it's not this uh, if it's not uh, more uh, less than this cost then it will be uh, removed and the next calculation will be done and this will have the same cost this is exactly what greedy approach is so to do the greedy approach what i'm going to do is let's do it using c++ the python code is pretty lengthy for the greedy approach so i wouldn't suggest using python for greedy approaches you can go ahead with c++ so what i'm going to do is uh, if you open the blog which you have provided let me just do one thing yeah if you open the blog that we've provided okay in the description all the code is available so i'm going to execute it right there and over here you can see this is the c++ greedy approach code and i've already executed it if you want you can copy the code and change the traversals over here you can see minus one basically means the starting point 10 15 20 10 minus 135 it's the same thing and let's run it it should provide the same uh, code but using the yeah so you can see the memory used was 980 bytes 47 milliseconds so now let's compare it right let's go to 
let's use a simple approach and see what exactly is the time it's taking this is the simplest approach which you could use that's a greedy approach let's run it once again see the output is 80 okay so now let's copy this and paste it and run it you can see uh, the time used for the greedy approach is much much lesser so that's exactly why you use different approaches in order to reduce the processing time so that's basically it for this particular session let me just go back yeah so that's basically it for the tsp session if you want to know more and look into more implementations of the code check out the blog if not that's it for this particular session thank you so much